Let's do our walk around on the Pi. You can see the pins on the Pi. This is pin 2, this is the 5 volt. This is pin 9, it's a ground. I also use pin 6 sometimes. Uh, this is pin 13, so this is our input back from the from the meter. It's the yellow wire. I use the same color coding as the as the meter uses the red, black, yellow. And then we follow our wires over here to our voltage divider. This is the wire that goes back to the Pi pin 13. This wire goes over to the plug on the meter. And this is the ground. And you can see our two resistors. I'll put a diagram at the end and label everything nicely. There's our plug. So red goes to red, yellow in the middle, black. That all checks. There's our meter. You can see the impeller inside there. This is my advanced version of the Python 3 program for the YFS201 and this one uses interrupts to trap the inputs from the water meter. Uh, it's going to write to the screen and to a file at user selected intervals. So you can say I want a reading every 10 seconds, every 60 seconds, every 2000 seconds, whatever you want. Uh, note here that the YFS201 creates six interrupts per revolution, which is a lot. Um, you can actually pretty easily exceed the ability of the Pi to trap interrupts. Uh, the input is going to come from pin 13. Pin 6 is ground. Sometimes I use pin 9. I'm not sure which I used in the thing, but any of the grounds are fine. Uh, the 5 volt uh, VCC pin, the power input pin, uh, is from the Pi pin 2. Uh, the input must go through a voltage divider circuit. If you connect that 5 volts back directly into your Pi, you will kill your Pi. Do not do that. And this is just a note to myself on how to wire that. Uh, a stopped impeller should not give false readings with this version. So this is the advanced version, my simple version. If the impeller stops on the 1, it will give you uh, false readings. So this is a, an improvement. It's a little bit more difficult logic, but it produces a better result. So let's get on to the actual code. We're going to import the GPIO library. We're going to import time and sys. Uh, I'm going to open a file so that I can actually write this data out permanently and keep it. Uh, opening it as a pen. Uh, I'm going to do a set mode. I'm going to use the board mode. Uh, other people prefer the other, but I prefer board mode. Input is on pin 13, and we're going to set up pin 13. 13 here, you can see 13 as input. Uh, we're just going to initialize minutes as zero. This constant you have to do for yourself. You're going to have to calibrate your meter for the water pressure and the conditions that you're using it under. Uh, I use 0 .006. It's just a wild guess. Uh, I'm not sure how close it is. Uh, going to keep the time new, so. Uh, just a variable I need, and then the report interval in seconds. Okay, go down here some more. I globalize some of the uh, variables in the functions, so rate count, total count uh, are two uh, global variables, and here I initialize them to zero, so here is the uh, rate of counts in liters per minute and total count. Uh, total liters. This is a function I defined to do the work so I can call this uh, through my interrupt. So this is what I call from the interrupt. Uh, and it simply just, well first of all it has the global variables, but it just increments the rate count and the total count by one. So very simple, very simple function. Here is my interrupt. So I just have this interrupt on pin 13. I did it on GPIO falling. Uh, callback is this function right here, and the bounce time is 10. Now let's go down and look at the main program. First thing we're going to do is just print out a header so that we can see what it looks like. It's water flow approximate. Um, we're going to do the time, local time, print out the local time, and 
the report interval. We're going to set the report interval from what the user inputs. So we take the integer of the input. So it just says how many seconds do you want to report, like every 10 seconds, every 20 seconds, and so on. We're going to print that out. Reports every report interval seconds. Print Control C to exit. And then we're going to write that same header to our file. This is our infinite loop. Let me see if I can go down just a little bit more. Now, can't get it all on one screen. Okay, here is our infinite loop. This just keeps going and going. Here is the meat of the program right in here. Most of this down here is just printout. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the new time. This is uh, how much time elapses in between each each uh, report. So here's the report interval. And this is the next time we're going to report. We calculate that from current time plus the report interval gives us the next time to report. This is the rate count. It's going to reset every loop. And then the next is while the time is less than the report interval, uh, keep doing this loop, this inside loop right here. Okay, so try nothing. Uh, this is just a status indicator. You don't need this. Uh, this is why the none statement is here. Oftentimes I will comment this out. Then accept keyboard. And this is just so I can do a control C and break out nicely. Uh, one thing I found that when I comment out this print statement, it doesn't exit nicely. It just smashes the program. Okay, so down here we're going to increment the the time minutes uh, then we're going to go down to let me scroll down some more this is the liters per minute and we're just going to calculate that so it's a rate count times our constant up there which was 0 0.006 divided by the report interval divided by 60 so that gives me per minute and then uh, rounded to two decimals. Total liters, pretty much the same calculation. Then we're going to print that information uh, to the screen. And then the next three lines, we'll print it to the file. And then we'll flush so that we get an, uh, an immediate write. Because if you don't flush, it'll store that. It'll buffer those writes and the file won't update uh, immediately. And from here, we'll jump back up to here and repeat the whole thing forever. And this is just for neatness. It's not really necessary. We'll probably never execute. Okay, so let's run this and see what happens. We'll push F5. Yes, we'll save it. Uh, let's do a short interval because we don't want to sit here and wait. I mean, normally you might want to do this every five minutes or something, but we'll do it every five seconds just so we can see. Now here's that status line ahead. Again, it's not necessary. This won't print to the file. So you can see our total liters per minute is zero. Our total liters given. Uh, five second sample. I'm going to use air to spin the impeller because I don't want to use water in the TV room. So here you can see the impeller changing. You can see that we had a 25.42 liters per minute uh, equivalent and our total liters were 2.2. Here I've quit blowing into the thing so it slowed down. So our, our liters per minute is 5.18. Our total liters are 2.7. Here the impeller stopped turning so we're getting zero and our liters aren't increasing because well that's the way it should be. Our clock time, it, not nine, uh, nine clock cycles have gone by. Again, this was calibrated for minutes and I'm cheating, I'm using five seconds. Um, and then it gives our actual uh, wall time.
But as you can see with the advanced version, when the impeller stops, it doesn't give us false readings, which is a good thing. So many people had asked for that. I've been working on it. And yeah, this seems to work pretty well. Okay. Well, that's it for the advanced version using interrupts. I'm also going to do another polling version. So you can look out for that one if you're interested. And that was it for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you found it useful and interesting in your RPI experimentation.